That is what happens when you uh, have a pre-tape getting ready to go because you're making phone calls. Welcome back to the Mix on Tuesdays. It is the big broadcast. It is the Sunday radio show. Thanks for joining us. Jay Bird Wells is going to join us back. Here in just a few moments, we are going to call our next guest. And uh, our next guest is set to be Micah Harris. He is going to join us here in just a few moments. Here on the, uh, is that the second hour? Hello, this is Micah Harris. There is Micah. How are you, sir? It is uh, James Lowe from iHeartRadio giving you a call for your radio interview. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. How are you? Pretty good, actually. Uh, we've got Micah Harris with us today. He joins us live here on iHeartRadio and AMFM, 247.com, tune in iTunes, and Radio Loyalty. And uh, he has got a fantastic book out there called Only Small Things Are Good. And he joins us today here on Skype Audio. We are going to go grab our co host for the hour here, Jay Bird Wells, on Skype. And. Uh, we will get her in here and uh, make some things happen. Now, um, Micah Harris is with us today. He joins us live here on our big broadcast. Thanks for joining us here on The Mix on Tuesdays. And uh, Jay Bird Wells, I believe, has joined us on yes. Skype Audio. And uh, Micah Harris, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, educate our listeners a little bit about yourself and your book, Only Small Things Are Good. Tell me a little bit about all this. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I, uh, so I grew up on a, a ranch in West Texas in the Panhandle, north of Amarillo. And then I've worked in Washington, D.C. with the federal government for about 12 years, most of it in national security. I worked in the Senate Armed Services Committee for a couple of years, about a year and a half at the White House, and then for a while in the office of the Secretary of Defense. And it's, it's that experience that led to me writing a novel about uh, a West Texas mechanics kid who goes to work in the Pentagon, and it, and I enjoyed playing out this sort of clash of a, a mechanics ethos, someone who knows how to fix a piece of machinery and make it run right, against someone who's trying to work in a, a massive bureaucracy like you have in the Pentagon. Uh, so that's, <laughs> that's the, the real short version about me and about this book. Now, uh, Jay Bird Wells is also a best-selling author, and she joins us today here on Skype, or as a uh, our, our friends in the podcasting world refer to her as a loudmouth, witty broad. However, <laughs> uh, we, we take that as a badge of honor here, Micah. Um, Jay, do you have any questions for, uh, for Micah Harris here? Always have questions for authors. I love how you have probably put a lot of your, let's see here, authors like to take some real-life experiences even if they twist it up and make some stuff like, oh, nonfiction, or fiction, I mean. Um, so what kind of research did you have to go up and about and in doing past your personal experience to put in this book? Mm, so I didn't do a ton of research because I had a lot of personal experience. The thing, though, that... That so the book is set in a counterterrorism office in um, in the office of the Secretary of Defense. I had never worked there, and so I did have to do some some research and reading up on the particular issues they work um, over there. The thing is, I signed a lot of non disclosure agreements to yes. do the actual job I did in the Pentagon, and so I can't, I, I'm not going to tell you that story. Mm -hmm. um, but I did some research on. Um, how terrorist detainees are handled. These are, think of people maybe at Guantanamo Bay because that's part of the subject matter of the book and it's subject matter I had never worked on. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Uh, it's probably an author to an author, so we might be losing some people. Um, <laughs> it is so, a... Um, yes, go ahead, Jay. I was just going to ask... Um, are you, you making a series, or is this just a one-time adventure? It's not. I, I didn't intentionally design it for a series. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure you could write a sequel, though, if it uh, if the times asked for it. <laughs> so, what kind of marketing do you do for this book? 
So uh, yeah, several things. Um, one of them is uh, doing talk radio interviews, which I've really enjoyed. Um, and then I did done an online uh, some online interviews, and then I'll be um, publishing some articles on similar topics as time goes by. I had a, a big book launch party in D.C., which was a lot of fun, and invited some Pentagon officials I had worked with that came out came out and spoke, and that was that was also wonderful. We've got a any uh, tips. I'm I'm obviously open to them. <laughs> We've got Micah Harris with us today. He joins us live here on Skype Audio. He is fantastic. He has got an amazing, amazing book out there. It is called Only Small Things Are Good. He's a uh, morality and religion writer, and he's been featured in uh, several media outlets, including FirstThings.com and Sojourners. And um, he's with us today here on our big program, and um, that. One of the things that uh, I, I, I want to get your thoughts on here, my friend, is uh, the Grammys. Uh, fairly recently, these these things crashed and burned, uh, basically were the lowest rated in history. Um, mm. what, what, what do you make of this? Because uh, it seems like everybody's searching for morality and wisdom beyond some of this stuff with the, with the uh, Grammy Awards or tweets from politicians. Uh, how does your book, Only Small Things Are Good, address kind of some of the things that we're dealing with in the, uh, in the culture? right now my friend yeah I, I so I appreciate that question um, I, I find that so much of our public dialogue is is carried out in a very angry voice and I've kind of noticed people doing two things one you focus on the news and you get really angry f- from either side at, at what at what people are doing or you turn away and just get disgusted and walk away and become apathetic and Writing this book, I uh, very much trying to find a way to really turn toward who we are as a society and what makes us tick in a way that's, uh, that's constructive and that's not driven by anger. And that was a, a, a fun project for me and one that's, uh, that I do recommend and I hope more people will pursue. We've got uh, Micah Harris. Does that Harris. make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. it does. Yes, it does, my friend. Micah Harris with us today. He's the author of Only Small Things Are Good. He joins us today here on Skype Audio, here on our Sunday radio broadcast. And um, take us through your writing process here. I'm always interested in hearing uh, authors' writing processes for their books. Uh, take, us through, uh, take us through that here, my friend. Yeah, I, so... I had kind of burned out working in the Pentagon, and so I arranged to take uh, three months off from work. And, I, and during that three months, I wrote the first draft of this book. Uh, the way I would do it is I'd wake up in the morning, put my laptop computer in my bag, and walk out the door of my house and tell myself I can't walk back in that door until I've written 2,000 words, which is about awesome. eight or ten pages. Um, and I did that six days a week until I had a first draft written. How how long is your book? It's three hundred and fifty pages. Wow! So how many how many words? It's about ninety five thousand words. I have time to read that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've we've got uh, we've got Micah Harris with us today. He's the author of Only Small Things Are Good. Jay Bird Wells with us today, our uh, co host as well on Skype Audio. And uh, Micah, tell us a little bit about some of the different reviews and and, and some of the different write ups you've gotten on the book. Yeah, um, so one of one of the most gratifying to me was that an assistant secretary of defense that I worked for in the Pentagon, her name's Madeline Creedon, and she read through it and, and loved it, and she found it one of the best sort of portraits of uh, what it's like to be a human being working in the office of the secretary of defense. Um, and then I, for, I was also delighted, There's a I met a, a creative writing professor briefly at a conference, asked her if she'd read it, and she loved it. She, and, and this particularly was gratifying to me because she's from a very different part of the political spectrum than I am. And she really enjoyed reading a book that shows how language serves to help us understand each other or to drive each other away. And you see both of those functioning and how people, how people negotiate some policy question in the Pentagon. You are totally down my alley. <laughs> well, I hope you'll read it and call me back. I would, I would love, uh, I would love to talk to you once you've, once you've dug into it a little bit. 
Micah I would, Harris. I would love to have that honor. Joins us today. Only small things are good. He joins us today here on Skype Audio, and uh, Jay Bird Wells with us today. Now, um, give us kind of a thumbnail sketch of the book and, and a closer look at the book itself. Yeah, so the, the main character's name, his name's Joel Alden, and he's, like I said, a, a West Texas mechanics kid. He goes to work on a, a, a thorny issue, um, which is how, what to do with um, detainees or prisoners who are picked up in the war on terrorism. And it's a tough policy thing because it, there's a question of, is there a time when the war ends and you release them back to their country? And the answer is no, that these terrorist wars don't end in that same way. Or is, can you try them in U.S. courts? And that also has been blocked. People aren't comfortable with that process and the evidence hasn't been collected in the right way for a court trial and so this story is him working through the policy question of how to handle what they call terrorist de-radicalization programs and this is some re-education camp that will be run in another country to help rehabilitate them and he gets very concerned about that and that a it should be effective and b it treats people right so I don't want to go on too long on that, but this is the policy issue he handles in the book. And then it's, I find that nearly everyone has this fantasy that if the president of the United States ever just sat down and talked with me, then we could set things straight. And that's a lot of the story here is the president actually doing that in a book and saying, and thinking through what would you have to say in answer to a question like that? Who are we in America? What should we be? What could a president do to get us there? Um, and so then the story plays out from there. Oh, we so totally have to hook up after the show. <laughs> yeah, give me a call. Micah do Harris. Do you have a website Go ahead, Ma- Jay. and a fan page for this book? Yes, I do. Um, the, the website, is, it's my first and last name, MicahHarris.com. It's M-I-C-A-H-H-A-R-R-I-S.com. Um, you can also find uh, my author page on Facebook, uh, which is it's the same Facebook uh, slash Micah Harris. Micah Harris joins us today here on Skype Audio for uh, his fantastic, fantastic new book. And uh, th- this book is uh, stealing the hearts of reading enthusiasts everywhere. Uh, it is it is an amazing, amazing book. Uh, give us the profile of the typical reader who's going to love your book, Micah. Well, I had, uh, I had two readers in mind. There's a, a big portion of this book takes place in the Texas Panhandle, where I grew up, and another portion takes place in the Pentagon. So I wanted, um, I was hoping that everyone who picks it up would find something familiar and something strange. And I wanted people from middle America to be able to pick it up and have a look inside this strange world of working in the secret national security bureaucracy. And then I wanted people who work here with me to have a look at what does life look like in the, in middle America where I grew up. Um, so those are two profiles of readers, someone in the Pentagon who could take it to their family and say, here's what my life looks like. And someone in middle America who can take it to the government and say, look, this is what real people's lives look like. And then there's the witty big mouth broads. Yes. <laughs> we, we, of, we often refer to Jay on this. Well, we don't refer to her, but the, uh, uh, so, some, some, some of our friends in the podcasting space, uh, if I can they use that term, it. they refer to her as a big mouth witty broad. So. Yes. Okay, well, I'm just going to leave that one alone, <laughs> which is my rule for people I don't know very well. Um, <laughs> but I appreciate that. And I think you'll find... Uh, Another that is a word that people have used uh, is wit to describe the the sort of bureaucratic tour you get in this book from uh, from the main character Joel Alden. You know, only small things are good. Yeah, you sounded pretty like clever and witty. Yeah. Do oh, you well, thanks. I appreciate um, it. do you foresee yourself chucking another book out in the next year? In the next year, probably not in the next year. I would like to, um, I'd probably have just a little more time than that, though. So you have distractions. <laughs> well, I still have a full-time job working as, as a consultant yes. for the Department of Defense. 
Well, you could at least get like two sentences in a day. Yes, I could. You're right. <laughs> now, uh, that's, your, that's your homework. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <then. laughs> We've got a, a great guest with us today. Micah Harris joins us here on the broadcast. Only small things are good is the topic. And uh, he has got uh, an amazing, amazing book out there. And um, uh, before we let you go, my friend, um, how, do, how do we... Uh, once again, find you online and uh, pick up the book and social media, all these things. Yeah, probably the easiest place is to go to my website, which is micaharris.com, M-I-C-A-H-H-A-R-R-I-S.com. You can also find it by going to uh, Barnes & Noble or Amazon.com and searching Only Small Things Are Good. Fantastic. Well, Jay, do you have any more questions for Micah before we let him go? I'm still in awe. I'm going to stalk him as soon as we get off. <laughs> she will. Uh, she she does that to all of our guests. She cyber stalks them on uh, on social media. So uh, you, you'll probably get a friend request here very soon, my friend. From the third Great, account. Great, do that. Send me send me a message. You can send me a message through my website easily, and we can we can link up. Awesome. Sweet. Awesome. Uh, there goes Micah Harris and uh, Jay Bird Wells. We will uh, take a break and we'll be back with more here on our big program. And uh, we want to thank everybody for joining us today here on our big broadcast, Coast to Coast, Boulder to Boulder. It is TuneIn, it is iTunes, Radio Loyalty, The Mix on oh, Tuesdays. Lots of stuff coming. Coming back with Stacy Russo. She is going to be our guest for the rest of the hour. And more coming up. Attention, this is a public notice from Citizens Disability. If you are one of the millions of Americans who are disabled and unable to work, you may be entitled to disability benefits from...